Amen. So I'm sharing this morning on the rich young ruler. Mm. When I was preparing, I had some questions that were very interesting to me. And um, I thought I could share these questions with you. We could just talk about this a little bit. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, whether well, there is anyone here who never dreams of being rich. <laughs> hey, hands up, let's see you. Those who don't want to be rich, let's see you. <laughs> anyone who has never dreamt of having more than enough, more than what they have today, is there anyone like that today here where we are? I'm sure you sit and dream of having a beautiful house for you and for your family, right? Amen. You dream of having holiday houses in different places where you can just go and relax. You want to retreat. Mm -hmm. Those are dreams that we have, right? Amen. A lot of money to spend on whatever you want. This one I know because no one wants to be broke. I don't want to be broke. <laughs> I don't know about you. So yeah. you can let us know if you are fine with all these things. Oh, I was thinking, am I the only one who would like all these things? Who would like a nice time? Who would like to just have things in place in order and I'm not feeling like I'm lacking anything. Maybe you guys are too holy to want these things, right? <laughs> we all want them. We all want them, right. So at one time or another, we have dreamt about all these things, all the lovely things, the beautiful things, you know, so that life is easy for us, isn't it? Let's open our Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 18, and mm -hmm. I'll start reading from verse 18 itself. And I'm using the Amplified Version, Luke chapter 18. Mm. We are reading about the rich ruler. Are we there? Amen. All right. A certain ruler asked him, asking Jesus, good teacher, you who are essentially and morally good, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, there's a difference between internal and eternal. So this morning we are talking about eternal life. That is eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom. So this is what this ruler was asking. Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is essentially and morally good except God alone. You know the commandments, right? Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not testify falsely, honor your father and your mother. He replied, I have kept all these things from my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell everything that you have and distribute the money to the poor. This is one scripture that makes people run away, right? <laughs> but we are going to look at it closely and understand what Jesus was mm. saying. So he said to him, sell everything that you have and distribute the money to the poor and you will have abundant treasure in heaven. This is Lorraine, you played that song and Mike was singing, wow, the music has been chosen in line with what the word of God is about today. This is what the word we know the Lord has put in my spirit. You're talking about the treasures of this world, right? So then he says to him, and come, follow me, becoming my disciple, believing and trusting in me and walking the same path of life that I walk. But when he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. <laughs> Jesus looked at him and said, how difficult it is for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man who places his faith in wealth or status to enter the kingdom of God. And we have heard people refer to this passage and they just love this particular part where they talk about the camel entering the needle. It's so, it's so easy for a camel, you know, but they don't really give a revelation <laughs> about what this is. They always want to say it's easy for a camel to enter, to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man. I'm looking at you like you should give me those things or you should sell those things that you have <laughs> sell that bmw and give it to somebody else don't tell me that this is not what jesus was saying so then let's go on and understand what jesus was saying so then <laughs> you know it's very easy for people to just speak one scripture and you know misinterpret the whole you know everything the whole message is distorted and those who heard it said then who can be saved but he said, the things that are impossible with people are possible with God. Mm. Peter said, look, we have left all things, homes, families, businesses, and followed you. And he said to them, I assure you, 
and most solemnly say to you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not receive many times as much in this present age and mm -hmm. in the age to come eternal life. Again, in this scripture, there is mis mis um, interpretation, and I'm going to clear it for us. Amen. Amen. So a lot of us, like this ruler follow the commandments. Hmm? A lot of us have got boxes that we tick. We check the boxes. You say to yourself, I do not commit that doubt. And this one is big, Lord, you know. <laughs> I do not make a shy I've never even killed. I'm not even thinking about killing anybody. <laughs> we did. I do not steal. Lord. I always say there are certain things that we look at, we, you know, we relate to. And we are even pointing at people. That one is an adulterer. That one, Lord, <laughs> is so much. But me, Lord, these commandments are here. I have given my son. We are so happy with these things. But there are other things that the Lord is looking out that we need mm -hmm. to change in our life. So you tell yourself, I do not testify falsely. I honor my mother and father. I send pocket money for my mother and my father every month. And I am fine, Lord. <laughs> okay, that is fine, right? <laughs> <laughs> so when this ruler came to Jesus, he wanted to know what he needed to do to inherit eternal mm -hmm. life. That was mm -hmm. the issue, right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus re responded to him by saying, follow the commandments. Then this mm -hmm. man said, teacher, I have followed all these commandments from the time I was young. Since I was my youth, Lord, you know, I have done wow. all these, I have ticked all these boxes and I haven't done any of those things. Then Jesus said to him, okay, that's good. You have done well. It is perfect, but you still mm -hmm. lack something here. There's mm -hmm. something that is lacking here. One thing lacks, mm -hmm. and this is what mm -hmm. you must do. Sell mm -hmm. everything that you have. And give the money to those who are poor. Okay. Give mm. to Francine. Okay? So <laughs> you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. This is what Jesus told this guy. And he was so confused. You can only imagine the shock in this man's heart. <laughs> you know, being told to sell everything. He was like, yeah, bah. Oh my goodness. Why did I even ask to know about eternal life if I was going to be told all this? Why did I even ask? I'm sure this is what was happening in his mind. We know all these things. We are human beings, right? Unless you people don't think about these things, I'm human. And there are times when I say, Lord, you know, this. So this man was thinking about, he must have said, pardon, but what did you just say? I didn't get you clearly, my Lord. But Jesus said, I said yeah, these things, all right. Yeah. Tell them, give the money to the poor, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is how you're going to inherit. Now, this man was very grieved because he had a lot of property. This is what the Bible said. He was very sad. He was grieved. He wasn't happy about what Jesus has said. Let's get this right, okay? This guy was rich, but there's nothing wrong with being wealthy. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you owning property or being rich. We are told in the Bible, that is in Deuteronomy, you can look at that. We are told that God is the one who gives us the ability. God gives us the power to get or to create wealth. Mm -hmm. So if the same God who gives us the ability to make this wealth, to create this wealth, how can he come back to us and now tell us to be poor? No, that mm -hmm. is not the message here. Jesus mm -hmm. was simply telling the rich man that if he wanted to be perfect, right? If he wanted to have spiritual maturity that accompanies godly character with no moral or ethic, ethical deficiencies, he must go and sell what he had and give the money to the poor. Then he was going to have the treasures stored up in heaven, right? This is what Jesus was saying. And I'll simplify that for us. This mm -hmm. instruction wasn't really about making this rich man poor. No, mm -hmm. it wasn't. It's about the heart. So this is why the Lord is speaking to us today. When we are looking at this passage, the, Jesus wasn't telling this man to be poor. No, it was the condition of his heart. Because mm -hmm. we are told in Matthew chapter, 20, uh, chapter 6 and verse 21, we are told that your heart will be where your treasure is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your heart will be where your treasure is. So Jesus knew that even though this man had mm -hmm. followed the commandments, everything, from the time he was a, a, a young boy, from the time he was young, his mm -hmm. heart was nowhere close to God. This mm -hmm. is what it meant. 
Right. So it has nothing to do with the wealth. There's nothing wrong with you having that BMW, with you having that Jaguar. I want to mention all the nice things with you driving the G Wagon. There's nothing wrong with you staying in a very expensive area. There's nothing wrong with you owning a jet. It is just the condition of the heart. This is one. Yeah. Things. Amen. So those people who come and tell you, my sister, my brother, you don't have to own this and that. It is wrong. It is misinterpretation. Mm. You mm. have the power to create wealth and enjoy your wealth. Amen. 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 Mm. So this man's heart was nowhere close to God. That is why Jesus told him that. So this young ruler owned much property and had many possessions, which mm. he treasured, which he treasured more than his relationship with God. Amen. Basically, that was it. Mm. This was the problem, and this is why Jesus told him to sell what he had. He wanted him to put his relationship with God first before his property and mm. everything mm. else that he mm. owned. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. And this is a common mistake. It's a common mistake. It's something that most people do. If your job mm. is more important than your relationship with God, then you are doing it all wrong. Basically, this is the point that Jesus is saying here. It doesn't mean you should quit your job, please. You don't quit your job. You stay in that job, but your job must come after you have had that relationship with God, right? It just means that God must come first in your life. It's the same with your spouse, your children, and the rest of your family. Yes. I just want to mention this. Eh? Let's quickly go to verse 28 of the same chapter. Let's go back to verse 28. Peter said, Look, we have left all things, homes, mm. families, businesses, and all. Do you remember the disciples when they followed him? They left mm. everything behind, mm. right? Mm. And he said to them, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, mm. there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not receive many times as much in this present age today mm. and in the age to come, which is eternal mm. life. This is mm. what Jesus responded. Jesus didn't mean you must abandon your family. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. that is misinterpretation. He did not mean you must abandon your children. Mm -hmm. Abandon your children. This is not the teaching. It's about putting God first in your life mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. family. God must come mm -hmm. first before your mm -hmm. husband or your wife. Mm -hmm. God must come first before anything. That is mm -hmm. what it means. I remember this church some years ago in Zambia. I attended this church just for a short time when I gave my life to the Lord. Um, I went there because the person who led me to the Lord was going to that church. So after leading me to the Lord, they asked me, which church do you go to? You know how it is. Do you have a church? And I said, I go to the Lord. Would you like to visit our church? Okay, then fine. I went to visit this church, right? Mm. But while at that church, I learned that most people had left their families. Believe me, this story, nobody told me. I was there and I saw them. And there was one man in particular who I knew um, his daughter was my friend, a childhood friend. He abandoned his family for this kind of the gospel, which had been misinterpreted, misinterpret, what? Interpreted. So they had followed Jesus. And if their family didn't follow Jesus, they left them. That was the teaching. Follow Jesus. If your father doesn't want Jesus, leave. If your wife or your husband doesn't want Jesus, leave. That is how it was because you are you are storing up treasures. That is what they were told. Quit, you know, you quit your job. So most of them had no jobs. Believe me, most of them had no jobs. They had sold their property. They had even burned their degrees. This I know because most of those were graduates from the University of Zambia. They burned their certificates. Others were now being taken care of. That was it was chaotic. That was the way of life there because they were storing, they were told they were storing up riches in heaven and not mm -hmm. here on earth. We are of we are we, we say we are on this earth, but we do not belong here. We are not everything was misinterpreted. But you know what? God quickly removed me from that church. I didn't stay there long because by now I don't know what would have happened to me. You know, God loved me so much that I didn't, I was even able, I was a young Christian, very immature spiritually, but. I was able to see that that was wrong. There was no way I was going to abandon my family. There was no way I was going to quit my job and all those things that were being, but what, the people who were, they believed it was the gospel. They had been mis, you know, they, they had been misled. This is why I'm saying we need to, <laughs> to understand the word of God. 
Yes, so that was a misinterpretation of scripture right there. It's not mm -hmm. what it means. Let's read Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, I'll read from verse 23. And I'm using the Amplified Version again. Jesus said to his disciples, disciples I assure you, and most solemn, it's, it's the same story, right? But it's being picked from Matthew's version. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, it is difficult for a rich man who clings to possessions and status and security to enter the kingdom of God. Remember what I talked about the camel? Everybody wants to quote about the camel. Oh, it is very easy for a camel to go. Why did you see a camel enter? Enter, go through a, you know, you can't even see the eye of an e a needle yourself. And now, that, that parable, people don't even have a revelation about it, and they keep talking about it. Basically, what it means is it is difficult for a rich man who clings to possessions and status as security to enter the kingdom of heaven. So your possessions and status in society will take you nowhere. This is what Jesus is saying. Everything will remain here on earth when you die. We have seen very educated people being buried and their degrees staying behind whatever they have achieved, their gowns of honor and everything else. I don't know, they're just burnt or their relatives will keep them. Nobody will take them yeah. because they will profit us nothing. They can put them in your coffin, but you are, they, they don't matter. Trust me, once you die, those things remain right here. Those are every things, right? Mm. People here on earth will respect you when you're a CEO, you got this title, you are the CEO, you are the professor, you are the doctor, you are the Lord, or whatever title that one may have, right? But these things don't matter for eternal life. That is what Jesus was teaching. They are earthly. Yes, we need them here. This is the status here on earth. But when we die, these things don't matter. They stay right here on earth. Let me read Matthew chapter 6. Uh, you don't have to go there. I'll quickly just read it and then we'll continue because we'll need to continue. So I just want to go there. This came to my spirit when I was preparing as well. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. It says, do not store, store up for yourselves material treasures on earth, right? Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store mm -hmm. up yourselves, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. That's why God must come first in your life. Amen. That's what it means when you're talking about treasures. It is that relationship that we have with him. It is not about the things that we are doing for ourselves, but it is that relationship that we have with him and we begin to store up the treasure. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 19. You were still on Matthew chapter 19, right? I want to continue from there and verse 24. It reads, again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man who places his faith in wealth. This is it. And status to enter the kingdom of God. So remember that rich man. It's because Jesus had seen the motive of the heart. Jesus had already known what that man was doing. He knew where his heart was. Because we, we just read that scripture also, which says, you know, your heart is where your treasure is. And this man's heart was where his treasure was. He didn't care about things of God. He was mm -hmm. doing good things, yes. He didn't murder anybody. He didn't steal. He didn't do any of those things. He kept those things. But his heart was far from God. So do not put your hope and trust in the wealth that you accumulate or that you have accumulated. Amen. You don't need to put your faith in your status. Those things will take you nowhere. Your faith instead must be in God. This is the teaching behind this parable, right? Amen. But this is what we must also know, that you mm -hmm. won't have faith in God unless you have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So mm -hmm. the more we hear the word of God, mm -hmm. we, tell, we, get, we are in a relationship with him, we fellowship with him, right? Amen. The more we get to understand him and our faith grows, that is mm -hmm. what we should know. So my encouragement today is that you will seek to know him, study mm -hmm. his word every day, fellowship mm -hmm. with him every day. So mm -hmm. this passage about the rich, uh, um, the rich young ruler should not scare you each time mm -hmm. you, you know, you come across it. Each time you hear anybody preaching about it, don't say, hey, now I have to sell my sports car, you know. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people don't like it because 
when when it's being stored, it's almost like attacking people who are successful, people who are wealthy, mm. and it makes those wealthy people feel uncomfortable. Mm. There's yeah. nothing wrong with us, you know, attaining a certain status in mm. society. Mm. There's absolutely nothing wrong, but it's used mm. to attack people that are doing well. So mm. you are afraid that every time mm. they read that, yeah, 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 that, you know, you are shrinking. But mm. when you see this, it doesn't mean you can be rich if you follow Jesus. It doesn't mean that. Mm. Remember, I mentioned there that it is God who gives us mm. the ability. He gives us the power mm. to get wealth. Go mm. ahead yeah. and be wealthy. Mm. It's perfectly mm. fine. Come and testify to us what the Lord has done. How mm. much breakthrough you've had. How mm. he has blessed you financially. How your business is doing well. Go ahead and do all those things to the glory of God. Amen. There's mm. nothing wrong. The teaching here is that, you know, to inherit eternal life, you Amen. must be willing to put mm. away the things of the world, mm. you mm. know, yeah. and love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul and all mm. your mind, and love your neighbor mm. as you love mm. yourself. That is this, the teaching behind, seek ye first mm. the kingdom of God first, Amen. and all mm. these things will be added mm. unto you. So mm. if you want to, you know, to inherit eternal life, mm. really, what Jesus was saying is you must be willing to mm. put away all these yeah. things, you know, the worldly things, and you must pursue God's heart, you know, mm. save mm. him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's why he said, go and sell these things and give to the poor. It's about mm. loving the person next to us. That yeah. is what it means. Amen. And the reminder Amen. here is that your relationship with God must mm -hmm. come before anything else. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm. I trust that you have enjoyed this message and mm -hmm. that, you know, you have learned or you have refreshed your mind about mm -hmm. what Jesus really